This is Jordan Edwards, and this is the Business Jiu-Jitsu Podcast. I am here with Sophie Sharp. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Sophie Sharp is uh, a rising star in the jiu-jitsu world, especially here on the East Coast. She's uh, a 15-year-old phenom, uh, active competitor, racking up the medals. But in addition to being an active competitor, you're also uh, an influencer and building a really great following. Uh, you have sponsorships, you network, you've uh, been covered on the news. So it's, uh, it's a real honor to talk to you. And I'm, and I'm so grateful that you reached out to be a part of the project. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. I think uh, you were one of our early, early fans here, you know, say, seeing you starting popping up, commenting right from the yeah. beginning of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, what do you think about this whole book that I'm writing and this podcast that I've been doing, Business Jiu-Jitsu? I think it's really good. Um, I think it's important for people to know the business side of Jiu-Jitsu is not all about like the coaching or competing i mean in order to have a school you need a business so i think it's very important to have this book and podcast yeah i agree it's been such a big part of my life and even though my business isn't the business of jujitsu um jujitsu has been so impactful in my business and so mm -hmm. that's why i'm i'm so blessed to have these conversations with so many great athletes and coaches and people who touch the jujitsu world and uh and you're one of them so it's uh <laughs> If you wouldn't mind, can you give us a little background on who you are, where you are, and how you got into jiu-jitsu? Uh, well, my name is Sophie Sharp. I am from New Jersey, and I got into jiu-jitsu by my older sister. Um, she kind of wanted to do wrestling for her school, but personally, my parents were just kind of like, no, because in high school, you don't start off with wrestling. You kind of need like a background. So my mom did a little research um, and found a sport called jiu-jitsu. And we found a place in Long Branch, and I personally loved it. Um, my sister sadly quit after a little bit, but I kept going with it. And almost five years later, I'm an orange belt in it. Wow, that's great. An orange belt who's, uh, who's beating adult women, if, I don't, uh, if I'll add that in for you. I don't know sometimes, if you would be. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and you're... As far as I understand it, you're training for the ADD, ADCC trials. Yeah, so there's a little bit of bad news to that. Um, yeah. I am going to them, but I'm going to hold off from this year just because my weight, I only just hit 110, and the there's only two women's brackets. So it's 132 and lower and 132 or 33 and above, hmm. and being 110 and having women all the way up to 132 is a pretty good big weight gap, especially if um, like the lifting part of it. Yeah. But the next trial is you'll definitely see me there. <laughs> good. I bet. And probably many trials after that also. Yes. And so you're from New Jersey. And mm -hmm. for those of you who follow you on social media, you train at um, Studio 84. Is that right? So not anymore. Sadly, uh -huh. that place closed down. Um, I'm yeah. at Bayshore under Joe Dockery and at Ivory Park Jiu-Jitsu under Kevin Roddy. Okay. Cause I see you all the time posting. You're with Nikki Rod, you're with this guy, you're with that yeah. guy. I mean, you are. <laughs> I'm so still friends uh, with all of them. Um, just as school closed down. Yeah. That's awesome. So. <laughs> really, really cool. So um, you're in 10th grade, I would imagine. I'm in ninth. ninth. Ninth grade. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So how does it, how is it that a ninth grader has the maturity and the, the drive to know that you want to be a world champion and train every day and get up and make yourself breakfast and hit the weights? How did you, how did you develop this mindset? Honestly, I have to give some credit to my parents. They really pushed me to, try and be the best. Um, but I kind of knew that when I started Taekwondo, if you don't know that, it's like karate, um, at the age of six. And I just had that mentality of just like trying to be the best in that sport. And after I stopped that and started Jiu Jitsu is like the same thing for me. But me personally, I think Jiu Jitsu is way better. And yeah. so it being better for me, it just 
drove me more to try and achieve more and more goals. Yeah. Do you or have you played other sports? Um, maybe like when I was younger, like I did baseball, I did dance, but like when I was older, no, it was just Taekwondo yeah. until the age of 10. And then ever since then, it was jujitsu. Jujitsu all jujitsu all day, every day. Oh, that, that's yeah. great that you're gonna that you're gonna start wrestling. There's a yeah. couple young young women in, in my gym, Budokan, who trained jujitsu from the time that they were, you know, four or five, six years old. And mm -hmm. when they got to high school and they started wrestling, they were wrestling against boys and just yeah. beating them up. I mean, really beating them up. So I'm interested. We're gonna have to check back in and see how your wrestling career is going. Definitely. Yeah. Are you excited to start wrestling? I am. I'm really excited. Um, a few years ago, I did the rec team, but sadly, I had a really bad injury, so I had to stop for a couple of years, yeah. but I'm really happy to get back into it. Yeah. In, in where you're from in New Jersey, it's like a hotbed of wrestling. You know, wrestling yeah. is big. Is there, is there any female wrestling or will you be wrestling against the boys? Uh, for my school right now, I don't believe there's any girls. Um, supposedly, there is a girls bracket and a girls tournament, but for my school, no, there's no girls. Yeah. So, you know, on the, the subject of New Jersey and on the subject of wrestling, one of our mutual connections is uh, Jamie, the founder of Eat Clean Bro. Yeah. And, uh, and him and I on the podcast, we're talking about how competitive the New Jersey wrestling scene is and what it's like to come mm -hmm. up in it. And, um, how did you get to know Jamie and Eat Clean Bro? I know. First off, I just want to say they're like the best sponsor, one of the best sponsors uh, that I have right now. Um, but honestly, I just reached out to them. That's what I do with all my other sponsors. Um, I really try and put myself out there because if you just keep quiet, you're not going to get sponsors unless they reach out to you. So yeah. I usually try to make like the first move and I was just kind of to eat clean bro and Jamie. I was like, hey, you know, I would really like to be sponsored. And they gave me a shot and... I want to say three or four years later, I'm I'm still with them. Well, fine, we could talk about that. The, <laughs> you just you just brought up like the heart of where I was like hoping this conversation was going to go, and that's like how impressive it is that you, at 15 years old, freshman in high school, have this like tenacity to reach out to adults mm -hmm. and get what you want, whether it's getting yourself on this podcast, getting sponsors, building a following. I mean. Do you recognize that that's very rare in adults? Um, yes, in some aspects. I mean, the top people out there, they obviously do that. Um, yeah. But for me, it's just like what my parents honestly told me to do and my other coaches are like, you got to put yourself out there. And ever since then, I've just I've been doing that and it's been working great. Yeah. Part of starting this project, you know, starting business jujitsu, the reason why I did it is because Every night when I would go and train jujitsu, there would be men and women in the gym who were interested in growing a business. You know, mm -hmm. they'd be very interested in like how I, I've done what I do. And I don't know if you know this, but I run multiple businesses. I run a real estate business. I own commercial buildings all over the country, like office buildings and shopping centers and apartment buildings. Okay. And then, and then I started a women's clothing business called Mixology Clothing Company. I actually have two stores in New Jersey and I have 12 oh, stores so all cool. together. Yeah. And uh, I'll pull it up for you to see. Um, and so, and then I have an e-commerce business. I never really talk about it like that much on the website, mm -hmm. on the, on the podcast, but, um, here it is. My business, Mixology Clothing Company, is a women's apparel business. It's 12 years old. We have 12 oh, wow. brick, and mortar, brick and mortar clothing stores and an e-commerce website. And we have about 300 employees now. My sister and I uh, started this business together in 2009 with some other partners who are no longer in the business. Uh, they retired. But uh, yeah, so we run this business together. Wow, that's so cool. And thank you. It's awesome. You would love it. And uh I'll send you some some clothes and some gift certificates when this is over. So we uh, so people in the gym would come and ask me all the time, like questions. Hey, I want to start a T-shirt business. I want to get into real estate. I want to flip a house. I want to buy a building. And I'd start to have all these business conversations. And very often I'd be using jujitsu as a metaphor. Like you're really mm -hmm. good at jujitsu. You get the principle in jujitsu. Now you have to just apply that same business jujitsu principle to business. Yeah. 
And one of the things I tell people all the time is what you, someone told this to you, you said your parents just told it to you, coaches told it to you, and now you're just doing it. But I want to tell you how rare it is and why you really do have the world champion mindset because what you've done and continue to do is so rare. Thank you. Like the networking, the going out there and getting it, calling people, picking up the phone, sending an instant message, commenting on people's messages, asking for sponsorship, asking to be on podcasts. That is the only difference between the people who become the most successful in business and everything else mm -hmm. in jujitsu and people who don't. And um, I guess you just take, I hope, don't, don't take it for granted. That's my point because it's so impressive. And it was actually what I wanted to talk to you about today is the theme of this podcast that I had in mind, which was like, Today on your Instagram, today is uh, November 4th because mm -hmm. this is going to come out probably in like a week. And you put up on your Instagram that you are the top rep for Eat Clean Bro of all their reps yeah. this month. So talk about that for a second. Like just what does that mean? It means everything to me. Just the fact that that even happened, I did not expect that, honestly, because there's so many other top people that are sponsored by Eat Clean Bro and just for me to be like the number one, I guess, seller, that would that was amazing. Yeah. I mean, for example, Frankie Edgar, former mm -hmm. UFC champ, is one of their main sponsors, you know, yeah. one of their main guys. And so they have serious celebrities. They've got the cast of the Jersey Shore out there promoting mm -hmm. them. I mean, they have tons of people. And 15-year-old world, future world champion Sophie is the, the number one seller. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I was very shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And, you know, I knew we were going to speak today and you put that up and I was like, wow, what a perfect thing to talk about. <laughs> you, you love working with eClean Bro and you know Jamie personally? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a character, right? Yeah. And such a good guy. Yeah. Such a good guy. Have you ever trained with him? I have not. Yeah. I have not. I, he said he really hasn't done much grappling in the past couple of years, but uh, okay. I want to I want to get him back on the mat. He said he's a beast of a man. I mean, he's just a huge guy. Not as big as your, your friend Nikki Rod, though. No. No. Have you ever trained with Nikki Rod? Oh yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I had the opportunity to train down with him down in Puerto Rico, and oh, really, I went yeah I went down to Puerto Rico before the uh, the team split up. And I was there for uh, oh. five days training and That's uh, awesome. it was, it was, it was really awesome. I'm so sad that the whole thing happened and we don't need to talk about that, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I had the chance to, you know, drill with Nikki Rod and do some technique mm -hmm. with him. And he, you know, his so far ahead of me and I've been doing jujitsu for so much longer than him. So it's crazy, but his just, he's, he has, he is so good. It's crazy how strong he is. Yeah. It, it amazes me. <laughs> yeah. When he was down at a uh, studio, it was like a whole different atmosphere when he was there. Like he would make us drill for like another hour after like class had already ended. And I, I mean, we never complained because it's like, all right, Nikki Red's here, take advantage of it. But uh, yeah. when he was down here for the couple of times, it was awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Did you ever go up to uh, to New York to train at Henzo's or any of those schools? Um, I did go to Henzo's once for a seminar, but not for anything else. No. Yeah. That's awesome. So you brought up your parents. Um, is your, does your dad train jujitsu? He does. Yeah. Yeah. How long has he been training? Where does he train? Uh, he trains at Bayshore mainly. Um, he's a pro belt and he's been training almost five years. Yeah. So he cool. started a little after me. Yeah. Um, and is is level black is this a company you're affiliated with or is this your company what's uh what's uh, the no, deal I'm with sponsored by them you're just so, sponsored by them yeah yeah i kind of like sometimes feel, they're i think they're doing a great job you know they're coming onto the scene right now and they're sponsoring mm -hmm. a lot of people you know damien anderson who's been on the podcast is sponsored by them yeah. and uh and a bunch of other guys and and i see that you're promoting them so it's cool to see another jujitsu company on the rise, but I almost thought that it might've been your company just the way that you, no, you rep them. No. They're just, they're super great to their athletes. Anytime a product comes out, it comes to their athletes right away. So wow. huge credits yeah. to them. Yeah. Are they, um, 
Are they a New Jersey based company? Uh, no. They Where are they are... located? I can't remember at the moment, but no, they're not in New Jersey. Not in New Jersey. Okay. That's cool. You were featured very prominently on a special on Inside Edition. Let me uh, yes. Let me pull up that link for, for the people who are watching. This yes, is a great. That is a big moment for me. Yeah, this is cool. You they did a whole you know news segment on you. Very well, cool. Matt, so How did shot. this whole thing come about? When I did the ABC News, um, Inside Edition actually saw that. And they reached out to me and they're like, hey, I would love to do um, a little sequence with you and everything, if that's cool. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, of course. And so it was like a couple weeks later, they came to the house and we started shooting. That's great. Uh, what amazing exposure. And there's a really good story. You said something in there that I relate to all the time. And they asked you, do you like always love to go to training? And and you, this is what you went, ugh. Sometimes it's back to training. <laughs> Do you remember saying that? Yep. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. so true? Like even if you love jujitsu or love anything in life, like sometimes it's so hard to just go back mm -hmm. that next day when you're beat up, tired. Yeah. In that in the inside edition, you had a black eye. Can you I just did, talk yeah. a little bit about like what it what it's like on those days when you just have to go back? Um, it's definitely, it can be difficult some days, but I think what kept me going was all my teammates. I knew that they was, they were going to be there. So that kind of motivated me to train with them, but definitely getting beat up every day and then not being able to move because you're so sore. It was definitely rough, but I mean, I kept going with it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, for, for many, many years, my, the dojo that I train at Budokan here on Long Island is mm -hmm. right down the block from my office. Oh, and okay. it, it was on the way back to my house in New York City, my apartment in New York City. And so I would have to drive past my gym. <laughs> and on those days when I didn't want to train and I'd have I'd drive home, I'd have to drive past the gym. And so even if I didn't want to train, when I saw that gym, I looked at it over the side of the window and I would say, you better go. You better go. And I'd be sitting in the parking lot sometimes with my head in my hands being like, I just don't want to go in today. I don't want to go in today. But every single time I went in and I trained, when I left, I felt better. <laughs> Is that how you feel? Yeah. Do you usually like once you get through the session, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Oh, yeah. I've definitely had those days. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go back to school the next day. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, when it was summer, it was a lot easier for me because mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about um, getting homework done or going to bed early. But now that school started, it can be difficult. I have to kind of set a time on when I can stop training. That way I can be ready for school. <laughs> yeah. But I'm still getting that training done. <laughs> That's good. How is your school work? Do you, are you a good student? I am. I am. Yeah, I figured. I figured. If you're going to be a world Very champion, good you know. <laughs> that's really good. Uh, also, for those of you listening at home, Sophie is sitting in front of a big, huge mural of an octopus. <laughs> and it's like you see this, you know, sweet looking young person. Uh, and then but you just know that behind is this fearsome warrior of an animal. Like, you know, sometimes they say like an octopus is like jujitsu because we use all of our limbs. And I just mm -hmm. like, it's such a, it's such a great metaphor for who you are and what you're all about and what you're going to become. It's wild. Um, tell me about being a woman in this sport. You know, I work with a lot of women. I work, I have mm -hmm. three, 300 employees at Mixology and virtually all of them are women. And I have a great mm -hmm. deal of respect for women. What is it like to be a young woman training with predominantly men? Um, in the beginning of my G2 journey, it was definitely a little awkward walking into a gym and not seeing another girl there. But as the years went by, like my first tournament, it was against a boy. So, and then after that, being so young, um, then, like I was around like 11 and 12, you didn't have the chance to go against a female. It was either a boy or a girl. You didn't get to choose. So then I just kind of got used to it. But as you get older, it does make a difference. Boys do get stronger and everything. And 
yes, us women can lift, but at the end of the day, boys will be stronger as we get older. But me personally, I never really cared. Um, I have very good listening and then like doing the move kind of skill. So mm -hmm. having good technique in jujitsu, it helped me along the way to go out in competition and not worry about that it's a boy that I have to go against. But yeah, like you said, it's definitely, as I get older, it's starting to get more difficult, like doing competitions or doing super fights. So yeah. we try and find women, but it's not always accurate. Yeah, it's tough. It's uh, I have teammates who fight in jujitsu tournaments, we, female um, teammates, and I have uh, a female teammate, Tanisha Tennant, who's the current Invicta bantamweight world champion. And, okay. you know, she just fights the guys predominantly yeah. in the gym. You know, she has to go to other gyms to go find women training partners. And so when she's training jujitsu, mm -hmm. she's just training amongst the men. And by the way, yeah. beating, beating them up, you know, really beating them <laughs> up. So it's, uh, that's one of the things that it's probably hard for people on the outside of jujitsu looking in, like who see your new special mm -hmm. that they don't realize like, oh, you're just, you're, you're training with the, and, and I won't even say boys, I'll say men, you know, you're training yeah. alongside beasts of men like Nikki Rod and these, and these big guys. So, um, how, yeah. how is it, you know, there's been a lot of controversy lately and I'm sure you've seen it all over the news. I think you even remember you commenting on it. I hope you've never ha experienced any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, how, what's it kind of like having those teammate relationships with, you know, members of the opposite sex? Like, have you found that they like look out for you, like a, almost like a sister? Uh, yeah, personally I do. Um, I kind of think of everyone as like my older brother and sister. Jiu Jitsu is a very family like sport. No one's kind of there to, uh, be, not be better than you, but everyone's there to support you and everything. So me personally, I feel safe. Um, other stuff that was happening in the jiu-jitsu world that's that but for my gyms it's awesome there yeah that's good i'm really happy to hear that because mm -hmm. when, if you just follow what's going on in the news right now or like what you hear about what's happening in all the schools across america yeah like would you agree and this is something my sensei says all the time like if more people did martial arts and jujitsu, like we would have a better world. Like, I'm sure you could probably think of a whole lot of people at your school like that guy needs jujitsu, that girl needs jujitsu. No, yeah, it. I think it's true. Um, you hear all the stories like, I don't know, like a drug addict joined jujitsu and it changed their life. Like it's true, it does change your life. And I think if more people did jujitsu, the world would definitely go up more. Yeah. I completely agree. Um, what do your friends who don't do jujitsu think of this passion of yours? Um, last year, it was definitely difficult with all of the ABC News and Inside Edition and all the other podcasts I did. Um, me personally, I kind of like to keep it quiet just mm -hmm. because I don't want to be that girl who's like, oh, yeah, she goes with boys or like something yeah. like that you know so yeah. i kind of keep my jujitsu life with the jujitsu people and like my school and outside jujitsu friends in that category obviously my close friends they all know about it but all total i kind of keep it on the down low <laughs> i understand that uh that's how it was for a very long time in my life too uh, my jujitsu mm -hmm. life was completely separate from my work life it was completely separate from my personal life and it was this little standalone like side. And actually this book and this podcast, Business Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. it was kind of like my emerging and bringing all of my lives together. And I never had social media before my Business Jiu Jitsu account. I didn't believe in Instagram. I thought it was like really bad. I thought it was unhealthy. I think social media was unhealthy. Okay, yeah. I thought it was kind of like having, you know, like smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And I was and I was sure that social media was going to get banned or outlawed. <laughs> I was wrong. And I said to myself, you know, even though it's there are bad parts about it, clearly it's not going away and use it, it for what it's good. And I even heard you say on the Inside Edition, like you use your influence for good, like you inspire people and you have mm -hmm. tens of thousands of followers and people who and I'm sure a lot of young women who look to you and write to you um, and that you're influencing them. So, yeah, uh, 
is like it, it can be a power for good. Would you agree? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Who are some of the people that you look up to on, uh, on social media, you know, whether in jujitsu world or otherwise? Ooh, I just want to say first off my parents, obviously they've helped me along this journey, but jujitsu people, oh, there's so many, um, <laughs> yeah. Danielle Kelly, Amanda Levy, um, Nikki, of course, all the people that I used to train with, but mainly people also that I train with in general, like at Bayshore and Asbury, they all like inspire me and keep me going with the sport. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Really, really cool. Um, well, anything that you want to promote or put out there or any message to the, to the community over here at Business Jiu-Jitsu? Um, I just want to thank all my sponsors who have helped me along the journey. I want to thank my parents, my schools, uh, Bayshore and Asbury Park Jiu-Jitsu. And just always remember, Jiu-Jitsu might get tough at sometimes, but as you keep pushing through it, it gets better because <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> very, very, very well said. And, uh, and if I might just say in closing, um, I'm really excited to watch where your career goes. Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm really grateful that you have been a supporter of this project and that you've shared this project with your followers. Uh, you have been there since like the very beginning. Some of my first podcasts, I remember you commenting on it and you've watched, watched this project grow and um, what you're doing, whether you realize it or not, is the building blocks of success in business. Thank you. And, and the networking is you are already at 15 years old at a world-class level of networking and putting yourself out there in terms of getting sponsorship, getting on podcasts, getting on news channels. I mean, there would be a lot of people that I advise and coach who would be envious and try to say, how is she doing it? How, I, I don't get it. How is she doing it? But, um, I think you would agree anybody who puts their head down and tries and shows up to jujitsu every day and makes those calls and reaches out mm -hmm. to people on Instagram is going to get the kind of results that you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, anybody can do it that really puts their mind to it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing about our, our sport and our country is like, we have a free country to be anybody. There's no, no, there's nothing stopping anybody from reaching out to me and being like, I really mm -hmm. want to be a part of your project also. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm so impressed with everything you've done and I'm really grateful for you being on the podcast and I just can't wait to Thank watch your you. career and Thank you uh, for please, me. of course, don't be a stranger. Let's, uh, let's have more conversations. You know, you'll fill us in as you're approaching ADCC and as you're having super fights, let me know about them so I could promote them. And, Definitely. uh, and, and again, yeah, shout out to your sponsors, level black, eat clean bro. And, uh, is there, are there any other ones? Um, oh, let's think hybrid healer, um, my CBD sponsor, um, fight back CBD. Nice. Let's think, um, uh, submission nutrition. That was a break one. Um, and I think that's it. That's awesome. And mixology clothing company, my company. Now I'm going to send yeah. you some gear too. <laughs> Thank you.